Hi there, hope you're well. In this video, I'm making a small footstool in walnut based on a design of one that I made when I was at school in the mid 1970s. Each end of the stool is made up of two tapered legs joined together by a rail at the top and a slimmer one further down. Those two end sections are joined together in the same way with an extra couple of slim rails at the lower level to make a small shelf or subframe. The legs are 25 mil or inch thick walnut and the rails are 18 mil or three quarter inch and the whole frame stands around 300 mil, 12 inches high and deep and about 400 mil, 16 inches wide. But of course you can make it whatever size you like. I'm using walnut that I've had here in the workshop for about a year or so, so I know it's nice and dry. I'll have machined one piece down to thickness for the legs and another for the rails. The leg sections cut down easily and cleanly. But the rails started to give me real problems with scorching. I even tried other saws and blades to try and get to grips with the issue that I was having. Goodness me, just could not get a clean cut in this walnut. Scorching and burning horribly, just couldn't understand it. Switch to the other piece and it's absolutely fine. So sometimes it's not the, it's not you, it's or the blade, it's the wood. Anyway, uh, a bit of careful work and some more thicknessing. And we've got a couple of, a uh, couple of bits of walnut, which I think will do. So I can start getting those cut to size now, cut to length. So I've just been pressing on, getting everything cut and sized and all the marking up done. And I'm going to put, because the, the little subframe is so skinny, I'm going to put this together with dowels. And I was debating how to, how to do them. I could get them on the draw press, but always the ends are slightly problematic. And I just did the old cotton reel trick. I showed, showed the cotton reel trick way back. And even though this isn't a, a basic build, it's worked incredibly well. Um, obviously I went, didn't get a, a depth, depth stop set on it, so I went straight through. But uh, yeah, that, that's, <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I'm gonna use that. So that's what I'm gonna do with, with all these. It's one of those weird anomalies where I need to get the little subframe built and made first before I do the other things. And the other thing I've got to do is, I wanna do a straight drill into the leg and then do the taper. Um, so yeah, there's a few, a few little silly bits and pieces like that to sort out. The dowels are a pretty nice fit and after a quick wipe over to lose the worst of the glue squeeze, I can get it all clamped up. And then slid across to the MFT where I can clamp it flat onto the tabletop. 
This helps make sure it doesn't twist as the glue dries. Glue set and the little framework comes out of the clamps nice and flat and now I have my bench back I can get on with the marking out. I'll be using dominoes to join the legs to the larger rails and I've used a 5mm domino as a gauge to mark the setback. And then I've marked up the positions for the dowels for the slim rails and also where they join to the legs. I'm using 8 by 30 mm dowels and an 8mm bit is a perfect fit in this old cotton reel, making it quick and easy work to drill out the holes for all the dowels. For the ends of the skinny rails I've clamped an upright to the front of the bench and I'm levelling the end of the rail with the bench top to get as much support as possible for the cotton rail. And then I can drill the faces and the edge dowels in the legs. I've made up a simple jig on the bench to hold the legs in place while I cut the tapers with the track saw. And with all the components cut to size, I thought it might be a good idea to see how they actually fitted together. So I don't normally do a dry fit. Um, but with something like this I'm making an exception because of the many parts and I particularly wanted to make sure that the these fixed sides worked okay with the, the central bit as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, you know, considering it's just clamped together, very, very happy with that. Nice and flat, nice and stable, no wobble. So all good, I can get on now uh, cutting the domino mortises. And as once I've done that, there go, I can start looking at doing a little round over just to take these sharp edges off. But yeah, let's uh, let's get some mortises cut. Now my mid-70s school stool was made with hand-cut haunched mortise and tenons. I'd have killed for something like a domino, as this makes this kind of work quick and easy but still accurate. On the face mortises, note how I'm using the front of the bench as additional support for the domino fence. It makes it much more stable as a platform. And I'm also using the offcuts from the leg taper to make sure the leg stays flat against the stop. These mortises were probably something else that should have been done before the leg tapers were cut, to be honest, but I just didn't think of it. Ends of the rails are next, and again, quick and easy. I do have a little dingus that centres the domino on a narrow rail, but provided the rails are cut square, I've had no issues doing it freehand like this, especially when you have a couple of bench dogs on a stop on the bench to keep everything in place.
I used narrow mortises in the rails, but mid-size on the legs just to give myself a little bit of a wiggle room during the glue-up. Roundovers next, and I usually use a tiny radius Aris roundover bit, but I can't find it since I tied it up, so I'm using a slightly larger one, and I'll sand out the difference later. Now, just a quick note about safety here. The bit is bearing guided, and I'm using a lead-on pin for the work to bear against, and I know how to keep my fingers out of the way. You can do this shaping with a fence, feather boards, and push sticks, and I'd recommend that approach for most people, but especially if you're new to routers and routing. I'm very comfortable doing it like this, but if you're not, then simply don't do it. One part where freehanding is the only practical way is for the small subframe or shelf, and this needs to be handled as a complete unit, working my way around the edges and always being mindful of the direction of the cutter to avoid a climbing cut. And again, making sure my fingers are well away from the cutter. I'm using the router table because it's all set up and ready to go, but you could make this cut with a handheld router, though I would recommend you fit a larger sub base to it, as it's very easy for a small router to get a bit tippy when you're working on skinny stock like this. And with all the router work done, I can clean everything up with my random orbital disk sander. Perfect for these kind of small parts that don't need aggressive sanding. Okay, that will come up pretty nice. Uh, no real issues with any, any of those. Normally when I make these kind of things, I'd make up the two sort of ends and then bring them together. But because of this centerpiece, which needs to go between those, that would make for quite a complicated glue up. So we're going to make the two sides like so, and then bring the front and the back together. So that's that, that's what we'll do. We'll get some uh, dominoes and some dowels and we'll just bring these two ends together. glue up for the front and rear frames next and there's nothing special about this dominoes and dowels and plenty of glue couple of clamps and we're off a quick wipe away of the glue squeeze then it's just a matter of time for the glue to set. Again, I'm clamping the workpiece of the bench just to make sure it stays flat as the glue dries. A few hours later and the clamps can come off. Let's hope it hasn't stuck to the bench. So they've come out of the clamps really well, nice and flat and square, no issues with those at all. Um, good, good trick, clamping them down to a bench to a known flat surface just to make sure they stay put while they dry. A little bit of glue seepage around the joints. Most of these top sections are going to be covered obviously with cord um, and I'm just going to go over those with the sander now before we... Uh, add the other sections in. One, one thing I'm going to use, this was sent to me by uh, the creator, these are called a sander card. It's a really simple, clever little thing. It's just a plastic, like a plastic filler knife, but with Velcro on it, hook and loop. And then you just add a piece of 
abrasive onto it and it gives you a flat but flexible hand sanding hand sanding card basically and it's perfect for getting into these tight little spaces. The uh, guy who created this spent his professional career uh, prepping uh, kitchen cabinet doors for, for spraying, for repairing. So he's very familiar about the issues of getting into tight spaces. Uh, this was sent to me, so it has been gifted, but this isn't a promoted or paid post in any way. Uh, I just think it's a really good idea. These are available from Amazon. Uh, eight or nine pounds for the card and a pack of abrasives to get you started. Uh, certainly less than a tenner. So uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say they're well, well worth having a look at if you have the need, and I suspect most of us do. And we're just going to clean up these edges a little bit, and then we'll get the two sort of the two front and rear sides glued together. Sanding done, and we can marry the front and rears of the stool together. And this is a really comfortable glue up as there are only the side rails and the skinny shelf to deal with. Now, while that hammers, let me just tell you a little more about the new independent member platform, 10 Minute Workshop Plus. Plus members have access to ad-free versions of the public facing videos, as well as exclusive content, a weekly vlog, behind the scenes and over the shoulder kind of videos that wouldn't normally see the light of day, plus early access to and discounts on 10 Minute Workshop products like the Loose Tenor Jigs. There's a searchable archive of all the 10 Minute Workshop back catalogue and exclusive member videos too, plus a lively new members forum where you can get your questions answered and maybe provide some answers to other folks too. 10 Minute Workshop Plus is currently a free sign-up with big discounts available for current members when the paid plans are switched on next month. So if any of that sounds like your kind of thing, then we'd love to have you on board and taking part. Uh, go and check it out at 10MinuteWorkshop.com or sign up directly at 10MinuteWorkshop.plus. With the clamps on, the whole frame is leveled up nicely so I can add a can of paint to weigh it down and leave it all to set. clamps off and a quick rub over to take away any clamp bruising and then I can get a coat of finish on it. I'm using an off the shelf finishing oil on this and it really does make that walnut pop. So there you go, that's our little uh, footstool frame in walnut. Marginally better than the one I made when I was at school in 1976. Uh, hardwoods, goodness, you never know what colour it's going to go until you get a finish on it, do you? So that's had a single coat of finishing oil. That needs to settle down overnight. It'll get another coat tomorrow. Uh, and that needs to settle down overnight again before we can start thinking about attempting the Danish cord weave. So I'll leave this one here for now. Join me in the next video and I'll be uh, attempting to improve upon my Danish cord 
<laughs> technique. Uh, thanks, as always, to my channel members, if you'd like to be part of the conversation, part of the community that uh, helps shape the content of these public facing videos, as well as getting access to behind the scenes and exclusive content, then come and join us as a 10 minute workshop plus member. That's my new independent member platform, full details at 10 minuteworkshop.com or sign up directly at 10 minuteworkshop.plus, links down below as always. We'd love to have you on board and taking part, but that's it for this week. Thanks so much for taking a look and I'll see you in the next one when I attempt to improve on, uh, on this unholy mess. All right, take care.